Before we jump into the video, let me take a moment to tell you, Alyssa and I, we love to travel and we bring the beauty around the world to you in the form of travel vlogs. If you're interested in traveling and would like to know more about travel gears and itineraries, you should check out our playlist of countries and reviews. It will help you to understand your destination and what to carry during those trips. This is all free and you can show us your support by watching those videos. Let's jump right into the video. I was shocked to see the rumors about Nikon Z90 being released right around the corner as I just purchased my Sony A6700. Z90 is rumored to be the replacement for Nikon D500. I used Nikon D500 for about 3 years and I consider it one of the best APS-C DSLRs ever made. Being the Nikon shooter in the past, I felt chills upon my spine thinking if I had made a wrong purchase buying the Sony A6700 rather than waiting for Nikon Z90. Here are the rumored specs of Nikon Z90 that these websites claim to have and I have listed up the common specs that these websites agree upon. 33 megapixel DX sensor, oversampled 4K 60 frames per second mode as well as full HD 120 frames per second or 180 frames per second which seem to be unclear, 15 frames per second burst mode and the websites are also unclear if it is mechanical shutter or electronic shutter for that 15 plus frames per second. 6 stops of in-body image stabilization in Nikon Z90 3.2 inches tilt screen They don't talk about the resolution or the screen being a very angle screen as it is in Nikon ZF These websites also claim Nikon Z90 has dual card slots with one being CF Express Type B card while the other one can accept UHS 2 Type SD card with the above specs, the websites also claim that Nikon Z90 is like a baby Z9 with the inherited AF system. Even if these specs are true, and even if Nikon Z90 has analog video recording capability, I don't regret buying Sony A6700 at this point of time. And of course, I cannot make my decision based on just these rumors. Here are my reasons why I don't regret buying Sony A6700 at this point of time. Sony A6700's S-Log3 recording capability is having a very wide dynamic range compared to any other cameras in the competition apart from Fujifilm cameras. Considering Canon R7's C-Log3's very poor dynamic range capability, I don't have much expectation when it comes to N-Log from Nikon for APS-C cameras. Sony A6700's autofocus system is better than Z8 or Z9 and if Nikon Z90 is going to inherit the same autofocus system, it's going to be much inferior compared to Sony A6700. I think I would still go with Sony A6700 for its autofocus. At this point, since I already own a Sony A6700, I would only think about upgrading myself to a full frame camera from Sony rather than changing systems. If you already already own a Sony A6700, you should be more than content with the capability of this camera. If you cannot do something specific with this camera, I think you should learn photography or videography better because Sony A6700 is a complete camera for hybrid shooters. But if you do not own a Sony A6700 and if you are in a dilemma whether to choose Sony A6700 or Z90, I would highly recommend you to wait for the official announcement and weigh your options. You should think about what you value more between these two cameras and which camera offers you more value for money. And also you should consider the third-party lens support availability for Sony E-mount systems, which is vast. Recently Nikon is getting third-party lens support for Nikon Z-mount as well, but for the time being Sony has more support for E-mount systems. Sony also makes APS-C lenses specifically for these APS-C cameras which are amazingly lightweight, sharp and extremely good, which Nikon doesn't offer. If you are switching to Nikon, I think you need to wait for Nikon's ecosystem to develop to Sony level and it will take time. And you need to weigh that as well in your consideration. I hope this video was helpful to you. Please like the video if you like it and subscribe to the channel for more such content. And I want to really mention that after analyzing all the rumors, specs and thinking about switching between ecosystem, I came out of the shock and I made my peace with this purchase and I'm really happy with the camera. If you want to know why Sony A6700 is the most important camera with the least compromise in Sony ecosystem, please check out the video here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy our content, whether it's travel vlogs or gear reviews, and would like to have access to our exclusive content, please support us on Patreon using the link in the description below.